Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're in our SU-27 and we're looking at takeoff and landing. So let's go through our takeoff procedure. First of all, make sure we've got flaps on. They will be here. So press the F key to get flaps down. Check that our air brakes are in. So we, they're in because this isn't lit up. Then what we're going to do is hold our finger on the wheel brake and we're going to build up speed to mill power. That's maximum speed before the afterburners come in and you can see where the afterburners come in because you've got these lights here. Once we've reached that amount of spool which you'll see here on the RPM gauge is about 95% then we will go full burn and release the wheel brake. Now we don't have to go full burn. What I usually say is if we're heavily loaded so we've got if we've got full fuel like we've got now and we've got stores uh, then you go full burn because you're going to be heavy and you're going to need the extra power. If you're just full fuel like we are today and have no stores or lighter then we can just go with mill power and we don't need to burn at all and we're going to save a bit of gas. So that's what we're going to do. Hopefully this runway is going to be long enough for that. We'll have to see. We're going to use our rudder to keep us roughly straight in the middle of the runway. Then we're going to rotate with aft stick at 240 clicks per hour. We can see the speed up here. Now we're going to rotate up to 10 degrees and hold 10 degrees. We don't want to rotate any further than that because there's a high risk of a tail strike. If we look at the outside... You can see that the tail sticks way back past the rear wheels and uh, and is very low anyway. So any more than 10 degrees and we're going to smash our tail into the ground, tail strike and that's the end of our mission. So we're going to hold that 10 degrees. Now when the bird actually takes off depends how heavy we are. If she's very lightly um, armed then she'll take off at pretty much 240. If we've got heavy stores and heavy fuel then it could be over 300 clicks per hour before she takes off. It's key to remember to be patient. Don't ro over rotate above 10 degrees to try and get yourself up airborne quicker. You'll just get a tail strike and it won't really help you take off anyway. So let's get ready to go. Now the first thing we're going to do is make sure we've got our nose wheel steering button turned on. And we can check that just by adding a little bit of gas. Doing a little bit of turning. Yep, it's turned on. So what we want to do is just go forward a little bit and make sure that we are straight. To make sure our nose wheel is straight. Then we're going to brake. Then we're going to turn nose wheel steering off. Ping. And now we've just got rudder control. So, like we said, we'll go for a uh, takeoff with no burner. If we're running out of runway, we can always go back to burner. So we want to put about 95% in, and we do not want the green lights to turn on. And we'll break off. That's about mill power there. Bit of rudder to get us back on track. Wait for 240. 240 now. Rotate. 10 degrees. And we're up. Gear up once we've got a good clearance. Wait till we're about 350 to 400 before flaps go up. So flaps can go up now. We can stick on mill power. We don't really need burners. Burners are such a powerful jet. Right, now we're going to take it into a left-hand circuit. Uh, it's going to be a, a standard circuit of 1,000 feet or 330 meters AGL and 500 clicks per hour. So stand by for that. And we'll report him back on the downwind. Okay, so we're on the downwind now. Um, so we'll extend it a little bit. In fact, let's just pause it to give us some speaking time. So whenever we're coming in for a landing, if we've got visual conditions like this, we'll be coming in from a circuit, either left or right. We're on our left here. And we'll be turning into a base leg and coming onto the final directly from that turn. Um, if you want to know more about circuits, which you, sh you should be using in visual conditions, head to our educational general playlist and we've got a tutorial in it there. So just a reminder, it's about 1,000 for AGL and 500 clicks per hour for a standard circuit. So let's talk about the final approach. Now, um, it, it specifies about 240 clicks per hour, I believe, in the manual for our approach. Um, however, I find that a little slow. I find she likes to ride at quite a high angle of attack like that. And um, seeing, seeing over the nose and stuff like that just becomes a little bit awkward. So there's no harm of adding a few more clicks per hour. The other thing is... When you get figures quoted like that, it always expects you're going to be in a landing configuration, i.e. low fuel and no stores or light stores. Now, we're not like that. We're heavy fuel at the moment and uh, no stores. So we're kind of a medium weight at the moment. Now, when you push the weight up of an aircraft, you want to, uh, you have to ramp up the speed accordingly. Otherwise, you'll stall. So in a medium config, uh, weight configuration like this, we're going to go in on approach speed of 300 clicks per hour. Uh, that gives us much more control and we're not going to ride quite so high. If we were super heavy, if we were full of bombs and max fuel and whatnot, 
then 350 clicks per an hour would be more suitable. There's really tough landing gear on these flankers, so there's very little chance of damage in them. Coming in too fast isn't a problem. We also do have a, a drag chute, so um, I've never had a problem coming in too fast in a flanker within reason. 350 clicks per hour, I would say, is maximum. So to reduce our speed, we're not going to use air brakes. You should never have to use air brakes on a landing. What we should be doing is um, we're going to extend a couple of miles downwind to give us some room to talk. Then we're going to make a left base turn. In that turn, we're going to reduce the throttle and bleed off our speed, just aerodynamic braking like so. We're going to time the turn so that when we come out of the turn, we are going to be on final and heading towards the runway. By then, we should have burnt our speed down sufficiently that we're going to be on about our 150 clicks, uh, sorry, um, 300 clicks per hour speed regards height i would like to enter the approach at the circuit height of about 1000 feet 300 meters or so and we're going to work our way down on a three degree descent or a minus three degree descent or roughly around there it might be slightly less gradient today because i'm going to take us out a little bit further than normal just so i can get some more talking time throughout we'll be trimming up and down accordingly to give us maximum control of the bird so speed's good and we're on height let's just be patient now and wait uh, now i'd like to point out as well that, that we do have symbology to automatically guide us on a runway this is not used in a visual landing this is really meant for if you've got bad visibility and you need an ils system to help you land i'll quickly show you it so we've currently got on route mode selected if we press the one key we would have return mode if we press the one key again we would have landing mode so the return mode will basically guide us to um, a, an approach point about 10 miles off the end of the runway I think it is so you know out there somewhere then the landing mode will guide you from there all the way to the runway and essentially land you um, it doesn't do it automatically it gives you guidance and you have to follow it and it gives you guidance in the form of this circle here basically you have to basically point your plane and your plane is pointing where that cross is there inside the circle and then it will lead you onto a landing and take you always all the way down to wheels down I believe like I said, though, uh, we don't need to do that. We've got visual landing conditions here, so we don't need to do that. Um, I've got a tutorial on ILS low visibility landings uh, in the flanker section, so you can look how to do that if you want. Uh, so we're just going to carry on. OK, we're going to extend uh, one or two miles, maybe two miles, so we can give ourselves a little bit of talking time here. OK, I think that'll do. So we're going to turn in now. We're going to aim to reduce our speed so that we're about 300 clicks when we come out of the end of it we're going to maintain our altitude so aim the nose just above the horizon now we're below 500 clicks we can get dirty so g for gear out f for flaps down check the indicators careful the nose doesn't dip too much during the turn now because the trim will change so retrim the aircraft to keep the controls neutral a little bit power on look and we're going to be looking over our shoulder quite a lot here um, to ensure that when we come out of this turn we are um, on the course for the final of the runway. So I'm just busy sorting my trim out at the moment. Don't want to lose much altitude here because she's going to want to dip down. So uh, you may need to keep a bit of power on and keep her nose up in the air. And we're going to have to tighten this turn up a bit. So power on and turn up. Uh, turn a little bit tighter. We've overshot the runway a bit. But it doesn't really matter. We can overcompensate pretty easily. So that's okay we're on speed now 300 clicks uh, because we're not turning we're gonna have to come off the throttle now retrimming to keep everything neutral now careful she doesn't dip we don't want to aim the plane at the runway we're going to aim the plane um over the runway because we're going to be maintaining about seven to eight degrees angle of attack at this point which means we've got to aim above and the aircraft will actually sink down now we don't have a vector um now we don't have a path vector like some planes unfortunately so we can't tell where this plane's actually flying it's pointing there but it's actually flying towards somewhere down there, I imagine. So we're really going to concentrate on our uh, uh, radar altitude here and um, try and ensure that we're between two degrees glide slope. Um, our lateral uh, movement will just be guided by visual. OK, so let's crack on. So nose up in the air. And the key is not to put too much alpha in because we don't want to um, struggle to see over our IRST there. So I'm going to stand up a little bit in my chair here, sit up just a bit so I can make sure I see over it. Speed, I don't want to drop below 300. If I drop below 300, then she's visibility will start getting hard because of our alpha. Double check the wheels and flaps are down while we've got a minute. Approach feels good. It's on speed. Still leveling out a little. Okay, we can start bringing her down a little bit more now. Visibility is excellent now. 
We're a little bit over the glide slope at the moment. We can just tell because our height is a little bit higher. So we're just going to lose a little bit of pitch. Tiny bit more left. That feels like a good pitch, about three degrees descent, I believe. So note how we're keeping our aircraft pointed up at the sky, and we're, but we're still falling downwards on a perfect approach. Starting to lose uh, speed a bit, so a little bit of power on. What we're going to do once we're over the threshold is cut the engines completely and cut and feather up and stall her into the runway essentially so wait for the stall and yep we just touched down there it was a little bit of a harsh landing you, you notice i had a tiny bounce there but it's okay um i just didn't quite feather properly i was busy yapping away that's it um once we blow 280 clicks per hour press the p key out comes a parachute which you can see and dab on the wheel brakes just a touch small dabs I'll slow it right down keep your finger on p to release the p shoot uh, to release, release the parachute the parachute's gone there and so a little bit, pump the wheel brake until she stopped, and we've stopped. And that's it, simple as that. Things to remember that we did there. Um, adjust your approach speed based on your weight. So what I like to say is 300 clicks per hour if you're not loaded with uh, stores. If you are loaded with stores, 350 clicks per hour. Touchdown should be 20 to 30 clicks lower than your approach speed. You'll lose that naturally as you do the feather and the engine cut. Don't cut the engine too soon. Wait for the threshold, and at which point you should only be about 50 feet above the tarmac anyway. Try and maintain about 3 degrees glide slope. And if it's a short runway, use your parachute. If it's a long 2 mile runway, you won't need your parachute. A tiny dab of brake will do. Right, I think that's everything. I hope that helps, and I'll see you later.